Hello everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. Been a while since I've done some typo negatives, so time to get back to typo negative. World Coming Down, released in 1999. For the longest time, we thought this was going to be the last studio release from Typo Negative. They did, they obviously did more albums afterwards, because I've covered albums that have come out afterwards. But there was some real concerns this was going to be, honestly, the last one. Um... This is one of those albums that I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. I definitely don't listen to it anywhere near what I used to listen to it. Actually, to be fair, I never really listened to this album all that much, even after it first came out. There's some ups and some downs to this album. And let's let's just talk about it. First off, the album opens up with Skip It. Skip It is... Skip It works only on CD. And that's because it literally sounds like a CD skipping at the beginning. Going, dip, 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 the way that CDs skip. Record doesn't skip the same way, and clearly cassette isn't going to skip. And MP3s, they skip if you uh, somehow make them sound like they skipped. Okay. Oh. I can make a, technically, a tape make it sound like it's skipping, but it's not the same thing. Anyways, where I'm going with this is that's how the album opens up. It opens up skipping, and then I was always, ha ha, sucker! It's about 11 seconds long. I've actually talked about it longer than it lasts. Skip It is great. Uh, it is such a good opening that when I made a mix CD for a buddy of mine, I actually put it at the very beginning, and he actually afterwards came up to me. We were talking about it. He asked me to make him a typo negative CD, and he came up to me afterwards. He called me an asshole for it. He goes, he goes, he puts it in the CD, and all of a sudden it starts skipping. He's like, what the hell? And he looks up, but the number's actually moving. He's like, what the hell? And then it skips to the next track. He's like, what the hell? And he's like, you're an asshole. Why would you do that? I go, that's how they started up a specific album. So I thought it'd be a great way to start it up. He goes, okay, that works. I like that. So that's how they open this album. And it's great. Because it's not the first time they did that. Uh, when they did, I, I believe I mentioned this on the October Rust album. They've got Bad Ground, which is a high buzz. It sounds like, you know, someone left the amp running without the guitar plugged in and the chords just sitting on the ground. It happens. Okay. Uh, on there, we go into White Slavery. Um, after all these years, I still have a very minimal opinion on this song. It was pretty basic for Typo Negative, even at this point. You know, 1989, Typo Negative had released enough albums, had been around enough that you could say there's basic Typo Negative, and then there's the kind of standout-ish Typo Negative. And White Slavery was a little more on the typical side. You know, it's long, it's slow, it's mournful, it's really fucking depressing. Uh, everything you love in Typo Negative. Then you hit Sinus. Uh, Sinus is another little filler track. This album is fill full of these little filler tracks. Uh, Sinus, uh, this one, I'm just kind of like, seriously, why? Why? It, you know, it's track filler of someone going... And take a big sniff, you know? And then how it goes from there. Uh, after that, we got Everyone I Love Is Dead. Yeah, okay, this one's depressing. This album is depressing as all fuck, really. Um, I really do enjoy this one, though. I always have. Um, and the going, listen to the song's kind of like going through seven layers of... The seven stages of grief. Um... And this one is a little more up-tempo, which is really nice. It's also the shortest track on the album, coming in at 6 minutes and 10 seconds. So that tells you what we were dealing with with this album. Uh, it's not the shortest track on the album, but it is specifically the shortest song. I should make sure to specify that, because all these little filler tracks are obviously shorter. Uh, after that, we got... Um, who will save the same? This one is slow and doomy in tone, but the music itself this play being played, the instrumentation, um, all 
all over kind of has a warm and comforting vibe, really, you know, and just kind of makes the song actually really kind of enjoyable, and it's a really nice kind of follow-up to Everyone I Love Is Dead, because, well, Who Will Save the Saints slows down a little bit, it's a happier slowdown, so it kind of counterbalances. After that, we go into Liver, which is basically a pee break that ends badly. Yep. Um, and that's followed up by World Coming Down. This one is background music uh, when you're working on a project. Um, this song's really long and drawn out if you're intently listening to the album, even by typo negative standards. If you're actually like intently listening to the album, it's long and drawn out. If you've got it going in the background, though, it's got some great elements to it that are really enjoyable and really makes it, you know, just kind of something nice to listen to while you're working on stuff. As I was writing the review, actually, I was doing a lot of um, Photoshop work, prepping up graphics for reviews and whatnot, and really enjoyed this. But the second I really started paying attention to it as I was writing out parts of this, it brought the album to a grinding halt for me. And it really comes down to, because it's nothing new from Typo Negative, like, this is one of the most basic Typo Negative songs on this album. The only one that is a little more boring or I have a little less use for is the next track, which is Creepy Green Light. It's got an all right tempo kick to it, which at this point in the album is kind of necessary. But the song at 655 really does feel like it drags on too long. And considering the previous song was 1108 and this one is 655, this one feels significantly longer too. So it's kind of like, really? Fuck. Um, then we get into Everything Dies. This was, I believe, the big single. Might have been one of two singles. Yeah, I think Everyone Dies and Everything... Everything Dies and Everyone I Love is Dead were kind of the singles for this album. I could be wrong. Um... <sighs> And it really is at the point with Everything Dies that I really remember why I don't listen to this album that much anymore. And I haven't listened to this album that much since I bought it. And that's because this album is really fucking depressing. <laughs> Even though this album starts with something funny and jokative and great and, and really should have people smiling and laughing of a chant of, Oh, I like vitamins. He likes vitamins. I like vitamins. He likes Vitamin. Cheesy, goofy, should have you smiling and laughing. But the way it's done in this song, even with the applause and everything afterwards, like it's got this great kind of intro going on. And then it just kind of slips into this thing that's really pretty and slow and sweet and a little cliche goth song. <laughs> yeah. Um... I am just not that interested in being that depressed anymore. Um, and it's really weird because the music is oddly uplifting considering the lyrical content is so goddamn depressing. And if I'm not listening to this album and I'm pulling songs off this album, I actually do really like this song. I actually have put this song into mixes because it is an enjoyable song. It just, at this part on the album, it's like, what the fuck? Um, and the reason why I gotta explain this is the Slow, Deep, and Hard album and Origin of the Feces were both very angry albums, very dark, deep, savage, angry. Like, there was a brutal angriness to those albums. You get to Bloody Kisses. That one is definitely much more to me of what I would call a gothic romantic kind of album. You know, it's very gothy, very romantic in a lot of ways. Um, not depressing kind of romantic, more just that dark, dreary kind of romantic with the candles going in the background in an all black room and drinking your blood red wine and... You know, I'm not going to say anything beyond that. <laughs> Just vampire culture, motherfuckers. Vampire culture. Um, 
Then we get into October Rust and World Coming Down, and both of these albums suffer from the same problem, and that is they're way too depressing. Uh, by the end of both albums, it's like hitting a wall of misery, and you're just going scrambling to find something to lift and remove that that not good gloom and doom you know like it's not the black sabbath gloom and doom this is this is a miserable human being gloom and doom you know it just really kind of hurts this album i think especially at this point in the album uh and continuing to hurt uh then we've got lung yeah basically you breathe you die that's this one okay <laughs> pirate of blaze follows that up this one gives the album a kick it really needs. I mean, like, it really kicks up the album at this point. Gives it some real tempo, something really enjoyable. This one definitely feels like it's inspired way more by Pete Steele's uh, love for Crosby, Steele's and Nash. Um, and um, I can't think of some of the other one. Um, a lot of that. 60s hippie shit which peter Steele has gone on record as saying over and over how much he used to love it so this one definitely has that vibe to it it really is a good song the only thing is i really wish they had stripped back the fuzz on it that really kind of soaks this album up i think it would have sounded a lot nicer i think it would have been a cleaner version of pirate of blaze would have been a much better song i think then we get into All Hallows Eve. When this album came out, I didn't mind the song, but it wasn't a huge song for me. And the reason why is, like everything else on this album, the problem was is it's the second last song on this album. This album has already been so slow and long that when you get to All Hallows Eve, you don't want to fucking hear any more slow and long. And this one is another slow, long song again. And on this album, when you listen to this album, it kind of sucks. It suffers from where it's placed on this album. I probably would have started this album instead. Uh, instead of putting White Slavery at the front of this album, I probably would have put All Hallows Eve at the beginning of the album. I think it would have done a lot better. I think it would have been more popular that way. Now, going outside of that, though, I used to host a DJ, karaoke DJ service, um, ran it myself, used to buy all my own music for it, and this is back when you had to buy everything on compact discs, but they were called CD plus G was the specific type of discs I bought. And the only typo set negative song that was widely available, easily findable, was actually this song, All Hallows Eve. So it was the only freaking typo negative I had in my karaoke collection. And to this day, still is. But karaoke is a little different. This song, even my copy I had, was so rare to have that I, when I was going out to karaoke years later and I started going back out again, other people didn't have it. And they were, they were blown away when I said it was available. And I don't remember if I ever found a version of it online either that was a good copy. Great song, though. Great song on its own. Uh, really good to sing, too. It is really cool because it's Pete Steele and Josh Kenny both singing on this song. And it's cool because for me, for range wise, it covers my whole range. I go from low up into the good kind of adequate for my voice, kind of passionate screaming and then back down into the lows again. You know, it doesn't go highs. Just kind of where I'm at now is kind of the highs, which is awesome the downside is is i have so many warm fuzzy memories associated to this song now that it kind of clouds my judgment the whole way around on the song <laughs> and then the album opens up with a cover actually technically a medley of day tripper uh, it's day tripper and a few other songs I have mixed feelings about this one. I love most songs that Typo Negative usually cover. Not all of them hit the mark. Paranoid, for example, really kind of misses the mark a little bit. This one is hurt, I think, exclusively by the extreme fuzz of this album. 
I mean, this album is just absolutely soaked in fuzz. And listening to this album on my computer where I have these proper studio monitor speakers is the first time I really kind of got to sit back and enjoy the music side of it because on my headphones, on my big stereo system, my living room, everything like that, the fuzz just overkills this song. I wish I could say the fuzz overkill was the only thing that killed this song, but it's not. Um, towards the end of the song, it goes into Day Tripper, and Day Tripper is one of those songs that musically, experimentally, cool song. I don't mind the Beatles version. The way that Typo does it, especially the way they work it on the end of the album, I really think it makes this album come to a brutal grinding fucking halt at the end. Really kills this album. I... I was excited to hear when I heard they were doing Day Tripper. I was really excited to hear what they were going to do with it. And it really kind of letting me down. Um, part of me kind of thinks or wishes they had only done Day Tripper. They didn't turn it into a medley adding a bunch of other stuff into it. Because the Day Tripper part of it is kind of the best part of it. I think the part that works kind of the best. If they had just done that part of the song and thrown it into the middle of this album, might have worked a little better. I don't know. The whole way around... I remember Typo Negative, uh, now this is going back four years ago, did this big thing, uh, 20th anniversary reissue of this. This is the original one from 1999. This is my original copy. And I... I don't think they did anything overly special for the reissue of it. At least not that I heard of. I don't think there was any other tracks or anything like that. And I'm going to go out and make, me worth, make it worth picking up. But... I kind of don't think I'd replace this version anyways because I'm really not that big of a fan of this album. Out of everything in the Typo Negative catalog, this is probably the one I listen to the absolute least. Anyways, folks, those are my thoughts, my views, my opinions. Let me know what you think. That's what the comment section is for down below. Uh, when you're on your way down to the comment section, you'll see a link to Patreon. Please feel free to click on that. There is a like button, a subscribe button, a little bell for notifications. If you could click on those, those help me out. They'll help you out, too. If you want to get my views, get my views up, get uh, notifications when new episodes come out, all that other shit. And other than that, peace, love, take care.